So good evening. Tonight I'm going to talk about the basics. It's going to be a very basic tutorial of the 6052 or the 6652 turntable and the 6909 switch which goes along with it. And um, I got my 1979 1980 catalog here as you can see it and I'm gonna go to the page here and there's a reason for this for one is I bought the 6652 which is the Macklin version of this or for three conductor tracks turntable and uh, it is the same as the 6052 and I will explain this when I bring the turntable into the picture here but this is the switch in question and if we look at the manual we will see here that we can see if I go a little bit out we have the turntable here this is the 6652 um, the Macklin transformer or Fleischmann transformer and the connections we have with the in this case six wires the 6052 had only five wires, but this one has six for the center track in there, which is also indicated. I think we can see this here, or we cannot, no, we cannot see it. Okay, fine. Now, in order to understand this switch here, is that when we look at it, we can see that this has an off position and then you either move it to the left or you move it to the right. So this would be the clockwise direction and this would be the counterclockwise direction for the thing to move. The activation of this is this switch, which you use to rotate the switch into three positions, pulls out to start the whole thing. And then you can snap it in and it stays in there. And then you have to push it back if you want to stop this. This is the basic function of this. And the turntable itself has three wires, gray, yellow, and red, which are the three wires you need to control the turntable itself. Two yellow ones for the two outer tracks, and then a white one for the center track, in this case here. And the way this unit actually is structured, what I did here is I made as a wiring diagram. I hope you can see it very well. Let me see. This here and this line here is the 6909 slash 6910 switch. The 69 is this here. That's the same thing. Has also five wires here which you connect this to. And if you have looked at these manuals, then you know that the two wires A and B is usually white and red from the switch, and they connect to the white and red AC terminals on the Fleischmann transformer, 16 volt, 14 or 16 volts AC. And then it goes out here. Now, what this switch actually has on the inside, what you can see here in the picture, is a bridge rectifier. So we're coming in with the white and the black wire with the 16 volts AC, it is rectified. And now what we have here, this rotary switch is a sweep three position switch with three contacts or two, um, uh, two double throws, triple throws, three position double throw. Yeah, double throw, double pull. So we have the center, um, which is just basically at this position here in the center, is the off position. The two outputs, the plus and the minus from the bridge rectifier are not connected to either one of them. Then when we rotate the switch, either in the clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction, we will make contact here with these two from here to here or from here to here. Again, center has none. And then from here we go out with the red wire, which connects to the red wire in the turntable. All of this in here 
is inside the turntable itself, the bridge that is underneath or inside the bridge, what you're seeing here. This goes, these wires, they go through a slip ring in the center of it where the wires attach. I will show this in a minute. Then we have the yellow wire, which is connected here and here. So this way we can reverse the polarity for the motor. This is a DC motor. So don't be fooled when that shows you here that this system actually show, uh, hooks up to AC because of the integrated bridge rectifier, which doesn't tell you that anywhere in the documentation that this unit actually has a bridge rectifier in it. This is, I think, where most of the confusion comes from. And then we have that start button, the, the, the push button, basically, which is the black one. When you move the black one out, it will make a momentary contact. And if you push it a little bit more out, then it will actually snap in and it becomes a switch. So it is, in until to a certain point, a push button until it is fully pushed out and then it becomes a switch. And you can see this here on the right arrow when, when you push it back on, uh, push it back in, then the switch portion turns off and it goes back into the normally open position. And this is our start signal. And basically what this does is it holds the push button in the, in, it's in a hold position as a push down to run continuously. And this is the gray wire which controls this. There is a relay inside the bridge and the turntable. That relay basically does only one thing. It pulls this contact in and it applies power to the motor. And then the motor drives a, a, uh, a gear or a, a timing disc basically which has a zero position, which is a cutout. And there is a plastic shaft in here. And once the motor is pulled in or activated through the relay, this thing starts to rotate. And when it comes to the out of that notch, then that plastic piece is pushed in against the, the switch. And then you can release this push button here. And this will make one full turn until it comes back to the notch and the switch opens up and the motor stops. And then it has also a plastic level on the side which you can push in to manually start this or start this without having this actually attached to it. You will have to have the red and the yellow wire attached to the transformer. Uh, in this case, you need to have DC. Do not hook red, yellow or gray up to um, to the 16 volt AC because this is not an AC motor. This is the reason why I'm making this uh, video because there is nowhere out there in the internet world, at least not that I have been able to find something as an explanation of what's actually inside the turntable and what is inside that 6909 switch to actually operate this. Now we have to remember this goes back to the 1970s and back then everything was electromechanical. This was just the time when the 4-bit microcontroller and 8-bit microcontrollers were introduced and they were so expensive that they simply did not make their way yet into the model railroading world, so to speak. For the curious, I have put in the prices here out of this catalog I got here from 1979-1980, which was for the switch, the 6909 switch, which is this one here, was 19 Deutschmarks and 50 pennies, or the exchange rate was about uh, two Deutschmarks for one dollar, so that would have been about nine dollars and 75 cents. Interestingly enough, the price list I have in here did not have a price for the 6910, even though that is listed. So it could be possible that this switch had the same price as the 6909, but this is my guess. The turntable, the 6052, which was only available as a 6052 with making contacts um, without the cut traces or cut tracks, was 190 Deutschmarks, and that was a lot, that was $95. And um, the most expensive 
locomotive or engine we had back then. Uh, let me just show you this here with the, I think one of these here, the old steam engines. I forgot which one, but I guess it probably would have been the 4175 or 4170, one of them. And then they were about 130 Deutschmarks. And then the other one, which was also very expensive, was the 41, uh, 4350. And then the uh, the 4375 here. They were, they were 129 Deutschmarks, just that you had an idea. So the, the turntable was by far one of the most expensive items Fleischmann sold at that time. And uh, now let me get the turntable over here. Let me move this out of the way so I can show you this. I had this sort of prepared. Let me see, I probably have to zoom out. Yep, I see this, let me zoom out. Now it won't let me zoom out again. In. Interesting. Unfortunately, I can zoom only in, but not further out. Let me <coughs> let me see how we can manage this here. What a disappointment. So we can see this here. So the first thing is I have my transformer here and I put it in the orientation similar to the switch. And now this would be clockwise and this would be counterclockwise if I got the polarity right. And you can see there's nothing happening. And what I did is, let me take this wire off and this wire off. They don't belong here. Is this still in? Yeah. You can see this here on the Fleischmann transformers. We had these two are normally the AC, 16 volt AC, I think it is. And this is zero to 16 volts DC. And since I don't have a bridge rectifier for the with the 6909, this is my 6909. And as you can see, is these are the other three wires I got. We have two yellow ones together. And you don't want to get these two yellow wires mixed up with the yellow wire from the three wire system. That is important. If you get accidentally one of these two hooked up instead of this one here, then it won't work. And this is basically the gray wire. And what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm doing the push button. If, let me see. Did I unhook this thing? There we go. Uh -huh. So you can see this. This is the button here on the side underneath here. You can see this, you can release this. You pull this in and then you can rotate this. The actual connecting pieces, they have the thing in here and they basically just go in and snap in like this. And then you're basically stuck here. If I go now in the other direction, there we go. And it comes exactly to a stop. It will advance every time one, one track. Now, in the way they basically suggesting this is to use this is with the 6909 switch you basically hold the switch pushed or you lock it in position until the thing has gotten to wherever you want it to go. Then you release it and then it will come to a stop. And you can go in the other direction here. Do the same thing. So it would run now to wherever we wanted it. And then it locks itself in perfectly. So this is basically on how this works. And in my case, I got the Märklin one and these two tracks are separated. This is what these two wires are for. One is for the right track, one is for the left track. They go through the slip ring here 
and this white wire here is the center contact contact for the this here for the maclean or for the third rail basically and what they did is you can see this they did a connector for this here a metal piece a metal bar underneath here which if you plug a track in this will connect these two together in this case since i got a whole bunch of them uh, i'm just gonna remove this here out of it and then i have two insulated tracks they're not connected together until you plug actually something in and they are not connected here on the blind piece basically either but this is basically on how this works so if you want to move through see this now we're clearing it and if you offset it then it will be offset so what you have to do is when you start it in the off position you get it aligned and then it will move over to the next one it will always move one so this is how simple the system actually works now for those of you who are into electronics you probably could come up and integrate a absolute encoder into this and then use like an arduino and drive this the way i'm doing it here with dc basically rather than uh, through an ac and a bridge rectifier and the switch and then you could actually automatically dial this into whatever position you want to go to we have 48 positions which means they're seven and a half degrees apart so you can do quite an elaborate layout on this let me just plug this one here in and we can see this a little bit better well, here we go let me see if i go in the right direction yeah and i will go to the other direction like this I have seen one circuit with an NE555 timer on the internet and what that person did is they basically when they turn that on they probably rotate this to their zero position whatever is the main connection in here and then you can measure this out and say well if you have a constant voltage uh, source say like a 16 volt transformer you can dedicate to that uh, or a 14 volt uh, transformer with a bridge rectifier on it then you're gonna have a constant speed more or less going around so now we have moved out if I go back this is how I over travel them then it won't stop Sometimes see with my wire we don't get enough power in there. And you just do this. Yeah. Back in there. And we're back aligned. That's basically what that is. Uh there's not much more to it. Yeah, he does it with an any 555 timer, he measured it out. And he said it takes, you have to shut this off basically with the relay. And you basically give it one impulse after another. And then you can count on how many times you want to travel around. I mean, there's a lot of different varieties just to show you this from the bottom side. This is the wire connection we have here. Um, it looks like it, they're the same, but they aren't the two. The yellow ones here is for the track. Then we have the one here, the gray one, the red one, and the yeah, red. It is probably, that is a, yeah, this is a yellow wire too. They actually have a yellow wire with a tad bit of red on it when you kind of break them apart. And in this case, the center wire, which we don't need actually. And you can see this, this is actually a 6052. Here on the part number, we actually can see this. Let me show you. It says this is a 6052 turntable base, 
but it became a 6652 because of the center track in here. And what I would like you to do is, if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the comment section and I will see that I answer them for you. And then we can uh, hopefully get you started in this. But I thought it might be interesting to explain this here, to actually have a wire, wiring diagram of the actual switch of what this looks like in its very basic version the way it was sold by Fleischmann before any electronics came in when it was plain simple electromechanical stuff and the turntable itself of what that looks like it the turntable has two inductances here in the red line and here in the yellow line in conjunction with the capacitor here and this is to suppress any kind of uh, noise coming out of the system. They usually do this because the German equivalent to the FCC required this back then already. Yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for liking the video and you have a great evening.